So I just wanted to make a real quick video talking about arc lighters and how you can make your own. You can buy one on eBay or Amazon for pretty cheap. But for DIY enthusiasts, I think it's a video. I want to make this video to show you how you make your own. Now, a lot of people do make their own by winding their own transformers or just buying transformers of eBay. Now, you can do that. It works fine. I have this little transformer here that I made myself. This is an LCD transformer, which I've changed the primary. And, and, it, and it works, but it, the, the output is not very good. So what I did do pretty much, I got another LCD transformer and didn't change the primary at all. And guess what? It works fine. Now, the thing is, not all LCDs have a feedback coil. This one does, and you need yours to have a feedback coil. So what you're going to do, take this and take your multimeter. And you should identify the all the different coils. So we're going to set our meter to continuity mode. And we're going to tap the first pin. Nothing is short, yeah. And go ahead and check all the others. So here we have one of our coils. And then... One second. And here's our other coil. Now, you're going to go ahead and solder wires to all those outputs. Now, one's going to be your primary coil, and the other one's going to be the feedback. It doesn't matter which one's which, because they're the same in length. So, that's your first part. And then... Uh, after that, MOSFET, here I have an, an IRFP260N, yeah, bolted down to a heatsink. This isn't necessary, you can go without a heatsink, but I'd recommend it. By the way, you can use like an IRFZ44 and it'll be fine, you don't have to necessarily use this. If you do use it though, this goes gate drain source. So, after that, we have a 150 ohm resistor. This isn't exactly 150 ohms, but it, you can get pretty close and it'll be fine. This is about 170, I think. 168. That's fine. So we won't need the multimeter anymore. So just put this aside. And last but not least, this is necessary, but it's good to have it if you're doing it handheld. This is a push button. Simple push button of all these soldered wires, just to make this easier. So what you're going to do, you're going to take this after you soldered all the wires, the secondary and the primary and feedback. And you're going to take the feedback wires, all right, and you're going to go ahead and twist them together. So just take them like this and twist them. Now, when you finish it, you shouldn't leave them twisted. You should actually put solder on them and, like, make a permanent stick. And then also, if you want, you can also put some, uh, like, little things that you can put the flame over and, you know, protect the connection. So once you've done that, you should take your push button and also twist it to the whole thing. Now, this is going to be your positive side, right? So twist that. And now I'm going to make this here my primary coil, the yellow. And this I am going to make my, my feedback. So now we will take our resistor, which is here. And we will connect one end of the resistor or resistor bank to our... Uh, feedback coil because the feedback coil will go to gate and does need and can't be as strong as the as the primary so we take this and we go here and we connect to the gate make sure we got a good connection it doesn't matter how good the connection is because you should solder everything after you've made this and then we're going to take our other wire and connect it to the drain of our MOSFET Okay, so, and then I have a power supply here, which I will set to 12 volts. You're going to take a positive side and connect it to the push button, and the negative side and connect it to the, to your last, you know, the MOSFET. Now, the output wires, I am going to stick these, because this is high voltage, it can jump to you and is dangerous. So, if you don't have that much experience with electronics, I don't recommend you doing this as your first project, because it is dangerous. So, uh, let me just set these up real quick. That seems fine. So, after we have everything connected, uh, you should take your multimeter and make sure nothing is shorted. So, we have here in continuity mode, we're going to make sure these two pins aren't shorted. If it's not making a sound, it's good. If it is showing a number, it doesn't matter. It just should not be making a sound. So, that's fine. This one's fine. These are going to be shorted because they are shorted here. And these should have a resistance of about uh, 800. That seems fine. So, 
Uh, let's go ahead and test the circuit. So I'm going to set the power supply to 12 volts. We're going to hit the button. Now, if it doesn't work straight away, which here it doesn't, you will see your voltage drop. Okay, and your current, it will go up to 3 amps, but you see it's not really producing anything. So, go ahead and turn off your power supply, and you should turn your uh, the primary around. So, you should untwist this here, and take this little yellow lead, and connect here. Just twist these together. Go and I'll take this and twist it. And take this and replace and put it on the drain of the MOSFET. And just to make sure, we will make sure that this is not shorted. That is fine. And that is also fine. So we'll go ahead and turn it on. And try one more time and as you can see I don't know if you can really see it but we are getting an arc you can see there but we are getting an arc now uh, to show you real quick we're gonna take this paper and light it on fire There you go. So this is working just fine. Now, you, and now just to prove that it does work, we are gonna go ahead and lower it to 90 volts. This should be fine. Now, as you can see, works just fine. So that's pretty much it. Just after that, stick everything, put it to an enclosure, add a 9 volt battery, and it should be fine. Like, it's not a really hard circuit to make. Now, I will note, I have fried quite a few of the 260Ns so far. I don't know why. The junction and the the junction between the drain and the the source does get shorted. And if that happens to you, if you can't reset it by just putting your hand on the gate in the drain, throw it away. It's useless. So that's pretty much it on how this whole circuit works. I will make a video where I will connect this to a boost converter and make a handheld taser arc lighter little project but for now that's pretty much it and uh, thanks for watching and i will see you on the next video